Hello. Hello. Ah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, hon. Um, I love my wife because she comes down here and like, hey, you're not live. And I'm like, I hit the live button. Oh, wait, I had to restart my computer because my audio wasn't working. Oh, 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 here's the intro. Fast forward, fast forward, Sparks, and we're back. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Everyone, uh, thank the wifey uh, for coming down here and be like, are you sure you're live? And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I hit live. But then I restarted my computer. And then I was no longer live. And I thought I hit live, but I hit live in OBS. Because usually YouTube, um, if you hit go live, or no, I hit go streaming. Oh, that's why, that's why, that's why, that's why. So where were we? Where were we? So I just talked to myself for five minutes there. Um, I gave out all the secrets of Voron and every printer we're working on for the next 10 years, um, along with all the business deals. Um, I'm not gonna repeat myself because I, I won't say it right again. It was it was a fully reversed speech and I, I'm sorry, but it, it, it's not gonna happen again. So unfortunately it, it, it is what it is. So I guess we'll just talk about um, this guy. Saval SV06. So a uh, couple weeks ago, Saval reached out to me and they're like, hey, we have a printer here for you. And I'm like, I get a lot of printer offers. Let's be honest, the vast majority of them are generic V wheel, bed flinger number 4278, whatever. And they're like, hey, it's not V wheel bed flinger and it has all the bells and whistles that you would expect in a modern printer. I'm like, you know what? I could dig it, I could dig it. So they sent this out to me. Um, it is the Saval SV06. It's got bed leveling, it's got a flex plate, it's got PEI, it's got a direct feed extruder, it's got 32 bits, it's got Trinamics, it's got pretty much everything you would kind of expect on a modern 3D printer. And let's be honest with how cheap inductive probes are and how common flex plates are and you know, these are kind of things you should be expecting on even low cost 3D printers nowadays. Um, it, it, it's about that time where, you know, we shouldn't have to get out and hand crank our cars anymore. They should have an alternator, right? Just, just because the bargain bin ones are super cheap. Let's be honest, it's current year. So if you are interested in the Saval SV06, there are links in the description, take you to their webpage here. If you wanna know more about it, um, there you go. So right now, uh, I guess they've sold 200 units. So. They are doing the tiered releases. This is, uh, instead of pre-orders, um, which this is a pre-order, I guess, but instead of like the whole Kickstarter BS thing that I don't like, um, what they are doing is it's a tiered pricing release. So this is a 299 printer. I will be approaching this as a 299 printer. 299. However, currently it's on early bird for 239. I haven't even unboxed it yet. So don't ask me if it's worth it, okay? Because I haven't unboxed it yet but it's a 299 printer that's currently early bird 239, okay? So, I'm gonna be looking at it at 299. So, direct comparisons, there's like the, the kitted out Ender 3 Neo, whatever. Um, but also, it kind of has everything in a, a Prusa has, which is three times that price. But anyways, is what it is. Uh, so, all reached out to me. Uh, they sent me this printer. Words and opinions are my own. I haven't been paid for anything. Um, there is a link in the description. They are giving away one of these printers along with some other gubbins. Uh, fill out the entry form there. I don't know exactly when the draw is, uh, but use the code that I also there, Nero something, so all I don't know. Just use what I wrote, because I can't remember what I wrote. Uh, enter if you want to win one of these. And also, we do have the Polymaker Filament giveaway that we do every stream as well. Is it worth it? I don't know. Speaking of, hi, 3D Musketeers. Great to chat with you. Um, as for Earth, because I, I know you probably all have a million questions about Earth. Um, I've got like, you know, a half a Delta there and, you know, I've still got, you know, electronics everywhere from Earth. And I think I got a Revo somewhere. I found a Revo in my pocket. It just, those just happen. Um, Friday stream. This Friday stream will be the after Earth, after action report. We'll, we'll just talk about Earth. So that's Friday stream. Today, um, we're just doing this guy. So we're gonna unbox this and uh, I set the stream up this morning. So I went to bed early last night cause I was absolutely exhausted. And I went to bed early. Like I think I got off the computer at like 8.30 early. And then this morning I woke up, brought the little guy to school 
uh, brewed my morning coffee, and I got the stream live. And then I noticed like three or four other streamers are unboxing this printer today. So I'm assuming um, it's because Saval asked for like a time window, you know, oh, hey, can you, you show it off during these dates? And everyone probably said yes. And everyone was at Earth. And this is probably the first day after Earth that everyone is um, awake enough to do a live stream. So if I'm on anyone's time slot or like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So SV06 comes in a pretty nondescript box um, because I'm hurting for room. I always end up cutting the tabs off and actually it's a box in a box. So we have questions. Oh, Steve's here. Hi, Steve. So let's, let's get this out of the box. Revo in your pocket. I thought you're just happy to see us. I am happy to see you. And I had a Revo in my pocket. Saval printer. Um, I have one Saval printer already. It's their IDEX one. Um, I'll be honest, I don't use it much because I don't do a lot of IDEX stuff unenclosed. Um, hopefully that'll kind of get rectified in the future. But um, I have used it and it, it's, I have got nothing against it. Okay, so here's the proper box. I probably should have unboxed that box to put this on my shoulder to take the picture but I like doing everything live so you can see. So um, for all the other YouTubers, if you're gonna unbox this and you wanna get the on the shoulder picture, you can retake it. Go open the first box. In the second box is the actual box. So you put this on your shoulder when you take your thumb, uh, your uh, your thumbnail picture. So there, there's a hot tip. You're beating Joel's stream starts in a couple hours. Um, I'll try it. I think he's four, I think. And then somebody else is doing it later tonight. Um, this is my normal time start. Um, for those that are new to the channel, I stream three days a week, usually Tuesdays and Fridays. However, since Earth, I couldn't stream yesterday because, um, uh, at this time yesterday, I was crossing into Ohio from Pennsylvania. Um, and I normally start at 2 p.m., although sometimes now because the little guys at school, it's 11 a.m. So it's either 11 a.m. or 2 p.m. and it rotates every two weeks. Uh, 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 somebody gifted something. Thomas gifted five community memberships. Cheers. Thank you, Thomas. So Val is thinking inside the box. They are. Okay. So whenever I do these, I always cut the uh, tabs off because I never end up reusing these boxes and it's just easier to work with without these tabs in the way. Ohio. Ohio. Okay. So what's on the box? What's, what is on the box? So we've got stuff. Saval SV06 developed from innovation, born from classic. I mean, the, 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 the motion system is pretty much Prusa-esque, which is uh, how many, a Mendel Prusa, Prusa Mendel motion system, which is how many years old now? Okay. So we got ourselves uh, the good old black foam with some stuff. Okay, that's an underpiece, so let's... How is this held together? Ooh. Ooh, okay. Did I open this upside down? No, I, ho I hope I didn't open it. No, it's got, this is the right way up. Okay, okay so we got that, we got a box. Got a box and a box and a box. And Thom, gifted five community memberships. Cheers. Okay, so we got this box. Put that aside. Um, oh, okay. Here's our extruder. So this is a board there. So we'll get back to that. So it is a direct feed and it is planetary gear. Um, I'm a huge fan of direct feed tool heads. Um, it's kind of just my thing that I like. So that is that for that, put that there. And my room is already filled with garbage. Okay, more foam. So, okay, how many pieces do we got here? Okay, so this is one piece. So we've got the bed comes pre-attached. Uh, controller board is there. Let's put you over here. And then we've got the verticals, which, uh, 
No wires. Nothing's pre-attached and it uh, looks like it's injection molded. So uh, the gantry, the XY gantry is again looking Prusa-esque. No printed parts though. This is injection molded. Uh, the top cross beam is injection molded. Verticals are extrusion. Um, and we do have an adjustment knob here for belt tension. And the belts are, oh, you love to see it. You love to see it. Gates. This is the first low cost printer that I've seen that actually has gates belts as far as I'm aware. Um, and actually, you know, it doesn't have the bottom end, but it does feel kind of solid. Uh, there is some machining to the extrusions probably to help it fit in the base. Uh, I'll put you over here for now. Got our power supply. Um, it is power supply, branded power supply. Uh, 360 watt, 24 volt. Saval. Okay. Um, it is, okay. So it is set to 230, which I live in North America. That's uh, 115 or 110 or 120, whatever the heck it feels like being that day of the week. So if I were to plug this in, basically nothing would happen. Okay. Nothing would happen um, because it's 230 and I'm feeding it 115. So nothing would happen. If you live in Europe and this is 115 and you plug it into 30, 230, you're gonna have a bad time. So make sure it is set for your proper region. Uh, power supply, XT60 connection. And I can see down, it's kind of hard to see but I can see down one of these little gaps here. Uh, it does have this connector that like snaps on. Let's see if we can slide it off. Because I want to see that these are indeed soldered on. Okay, so they're XT60s are proper. This is soldered on. So these are soldered. So if you remember, there was that spat there of enders that they crimp these, which is a no-no. These are soldered, which is the right way to do an XT60. So that's good. Okay, we got ourselves some manuals. I got a feeling like I opened this upside down, but it, that's how the box is. Assembly manuals, and we will follow the manual because that's how we do it here. Uh, the tool head is quick swap. Is that quick swap? Is that quick swap? Cool. So we'll go through the manual as we build it. We'd love to hear from you. There you go, dear Savaller. Savaller? There we go, dear Savaller. Thanks for purchasing our Saval SV06 3D printer. This is our first printer with Saval self-developed mainboard. Oh, so they're not using the same mainboards as Creality. We'll open up the controller box and see what's inside. Uh, with completely new appearance, we hope you like it. If you have any questions about the product or advice for improvement, please contact us via email or Saval Facebook message. Our team are more than happy to help and try our best to improve your experience. Meanwhile, also welcome you to join our official user group, share experience, print ideas, advice with 13K plus members. Your contribution, your contributions will be appreciated a lot. Best regards, Saval team. That's actually pretty good English. I'm actually, that's a nice little letter. We'll go through the manual and see if we run across any uh, good old fashioned ink chingrish, but that's actually a nicely worded letter. Uh, screen. And part of a spool holder. I don't know where the rest of the spool holder is. Oh, and we got more. Another piece of paper. So I think I opened this upside down. I think I opened this upside down because all the paper is backwards, but whatever. So they got this uh, leveling guide and all that jazz. So okay. let's get this box out of here make more room and by room I mean put a pile of stuff on the other side of the room okay um, this room is now a fire hazard don't tell the fire marshal okay what's in the box uh, goodie bag uh, part of the spool holder sample filament in the bin power cord ah uh, yes 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 Ooh, light blue handle. A fine addition to my collection. I'll just add you to the, to the pile. Um, the wrench. Zip ties. They've probably got that thing that'll poke you, the, the acupuncture tip. 
that they always include that nobody ever actually uses. Some needle, oh, some nice pliers, some needle nose. Yeah, it's, and screws. And SC card and a spare nozzle. Cool. Okay. And a spatula. The good, the good old fashioned spatula. Number two. Number two spatula. So there we go. Um, all in all, initial impressions of the unboxing, not bad, not bad. I, I like the Gates belts. It has Gates belts, so. North American power core by 240. It, these are probably all assembled in one go at the factory and they're probably 240 default and just nobody flipped it. You're all, no matter where you buy a printer from, you should always check the switch because it doesn't matter where it comes from. It could be either or. A lot of time, Asian market printers I find come at 24 or 230 default. V6 nozzle. Um, So it's a, the hot end looks like it's bimetallic. So, it's a bimetallic heat break in there. You can see the, the copper, um, but it's your, your standard V6-ish block, or correction, Mark 8 block. So the same block. So it probably uses Creality nozzles. Um, this looks a little different of a nozzle style than I'm used to, but I'm sure you could probably throw a V6 nozzle in there just fine. So. Mark 8 nozzle, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not. Although, the... Uh, the part cooling fan sucking up air from the bed is kind of a, uh, we'll, we'll see about that. Cause this is kind of a weird design for, yeah, this is kind of a funky design they got here with the uh, extruder. We'll get back to that though. DFH gifted 10 community memberships. Cheers. Is it a CHT nozzle? I don't think so. It does not look like it. at least a spare one. Okay, so let's build ourselves a printer. Oh, before we do that, um, electronics, electronics. So so they got their own controller board now, apparently. Okay, so let's let's take a look and see what we actually have here um, for it. So open, close. So let me get some wrenches here. <laughs> the park cooling fan will hoover up all the loose prints. There you go. Not that one. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the uh, the little pokey acupuncture needle of death right now because I never use it and all I do is stab myself with them. So here we go. So inside the controller, oh, 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 do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Ferals. We have ferrules on the wires. Okay, so we got ferrules, uh, Saval board, uh, S or GD32F103 controller, um, four drivers, uh, TMC 2209s, I believe. You can check the specs to verify. MOSFETs have their own heat sink, uh, part cooling fan. Uh, it's got a fuse, power in. Uh, filament detect, part fan, some other fans. Yeah. Um, where does this guy go? Oh. So yeah, uh, it looks pretty clean in there. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not concerned. 
I'm not concerned. I like the ferals. They actually put ferals. Good job, Saval. You get a, you're starting off strong. So far, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty content with what I'm seeing. i put this screw back in there. Does look like, uh, here's the thing. I've only ever built one ender um, and it's sitting in parts in another room. So I don't know what all the ender boards are. Um, so if so you're like, oh, it looks, it looks like this. And I'm like, oh, okay then. There we go. Okay. So all in all, um, I like it. I like it. Uh, Zombie Hedgehog gifted one community membership. Okay. I mean, let's be honest. There's more room in that box than most and um, Brusa boxes. Seen one ender, you've seen them all. Yeah. Um, let's check the magnet. Could be stronger. Could the magnet. It is a flex plate. Um, you got a textured side and an untextured side. Um, so if you want to stick a magnet on it, this is PI, but it's not the sticker. Okay. So if you want to stick a sticker on here down the line, you could. Um, warning hot surface. It is, it does feel relatively thin. Uh, the magnet itself, not the strongest. Probably fine. I'll see if it becomes an issue during printing. Um, but the magnet itself is just stuck on. So it is a PCB bed, kind of like a Prusa Mark III or, or an Ender bed. Um, if you really wanted to, you could remove this magnet and replace it. Um, the bed wires are zip tied to a plastic clip holder here for strain relief. And they are soldered to the bed. Um, I don't see any markings on, oh, no, Gates belts as well. So we do have Gates belt as well. Uh, wires are all pre-managed with clips. There are nice little clips everywhere here for the wires. Uh, a bunch of zip ties. Uh, the bed frame itself is injection molded, uh, three LMU. Um, and again, you do have a tensioning thing here. Um, yeah. I'm actually thinking this is actually pretty decently constructed so far. Nothing's really standing out. The only the only thing that I've, I've comment on so far is the magnet's kind of weak, which is a solvable problem. Okay, so let's get the manual and assemble this per the manual because that's what we do here because not everyone has built a printer before. Children under 10 should not use the printer without supervision. I'm 34, we're good. Do not wear cotton gloves when operating the printer. Such cloths may become tangled in the printer moving parts leading to burns, possible injury, or printer damage. Yep, you got your sleeves rolled up. Wear your apron, just for safety. You never know. Okay, install the gantry with the four M550 screws. Tighten the screws. Okay. So, let's do that amount of Prusa bed on it. Um, I don't know. I don't know because I don't know the dimensions if it would clear. Okay, so there are notches uh, for indexing for this. So in terms of, oop, let me get off that wire. Okay, so that's sitting flat. Okay, it seems to pr sit pretty level. Flow for the drop of fat XG. Ah, shoot. Somebody on, I think Steve, if you're here, I think Steve tested it. And I think it comes out just a hair above a Revo, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so we've got our screws. Um, it doesn't say anything about using lock washers. It comes with lock washers. I'm gonna use the lock washers. But the manual doesn't say anything about lock washers. So we are gonna include use them though, because we have them. Yeah, it, the, the XG isn't high flow. It's not high flow. It, it's a little bit better than regular flow, which same as the Revo. Depends on your material too.
Did Corvette, it's equal, closer to being equal to Rapido. Then maybe I'm reading the wrong chart. I haven't really, I'll be honest, I haven't pushed mine. I've been running my normal profile with it. It's almost an i3 design. An i3 is almost an i2 design, and i2 is almost a Mendel design. I mean, anything, this is extrusion, so this would be closer than a bit to a bear. And don't forget, uh, Saval is doing a giveaway of this printer along with some other goodies. And we do have the usual Polymaker giveaway as well. So link in the description for both those draws. They're two separate ones. There we go. Try not to set off everyone Google's home by turning on my uh, AC to get some air movement. There we go. Ooh. There's a daddy long leg on my ceiling. So nice that's mostly assembled. Yeah. I'm thinking it's a, uh, a case of verticals and then plug everything in and we should be good to go. Um, no, everything's injection molded. Um, these parts are, I don't know if that's, in, yeah, that's injection molded. Everything's injection molded for the parts. So that's good to see. As for what it's injection molded out of, um, probably just ABS or some form of PC ABS. Can you clipperize it? I don't see why not. All right, so we've done that. Attach the screen and I know a lot of people are not gonna be thrilled and disagree with me here, but this is the kind of screen I like on my printer. 12864. I love me my digital readout screens that aren't touch screens. I do not like touch screens. One second, we have a visitor. And by visitor, I mean I gotta make room because somebody's at the door. Well, you gotta stop locking the door, Calvin, when you leave the room. Hello, Dada. Hello. Did you have a good day at school? <laughs> hey, what's Daddy building? What is that? What that? That's a 3D printer. Did you have a good day at school? Yeah. What did you learn? Hey, what did you learn? My boy. You play with toys? Yeah. You're supposed to be learning. Mom. Yes, Coda. I get I, it. I got doggo. I got baby. <laughs> Mama, I get it. You want hugs and kisses with mommy? Okay. Yeah. You gonna let daddy work? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. Goodbye. Hi, Dada. Hi. Hi, Calvin. Hi. Daddy's gotta work. Hi. Okay, uh, pigeon print, $10, cheers. Uh, here's the body towards the design prototype testing of a tinfoil hat version of the only Benji's hat. Working on it. It's under development R&D. Uh, there was an accident though in the apron mines though. So we gotta take care of that first. He's so big. He was born the day I ordered the frame for that printer. Time flies, holy shit. Pleasure meeting you at Murph. Cheers. I, I'm sorry. If you talk to me at Murph, it was, er, Murph, Earth. It is a blur to me. I am a very, I'm, I'm not a good memory person when it comes to names. Um, so if I met you, um, literally, unless you wear a name badge, I probably won't remember your name. Oh, this is cool. So let's see here. Do they give you options? Oh no, it goes there. Okay. Let's try and stick this on the right way. 
So it goes that one and that one. Okay. That is a little tight. Might have to loosen that off a bit. There we go. Okay. So we got that screen on. Install the display on the holder on the right base. Push it down diagonally. Okay. So we've got the screen is on. Doesn't say anything about plugging it in yet. So we're not going to. And it's on a pretty good angle. You can see it, it's like straight up at you. I'm the Fuku's guy. Oh, okay, hello there. Yes. Okay. Next, power supply. Okay. So this attaches with two M4020s, which, oh, look at that. It's even labeled step two. That's good, that's good. Uh, par gifted five community memberships. Cheers. Oh, that Allen key. Is it this Allen key? Nope. This Allen key? Yep. Okay. And this goes through the extrusion here. Yeah, Earth was great. I'm not going to talk about Earth much on this stream um, because that will be Friday stream. So. If you got a quick question or you just want to say hello or whatever, that like, that's fine. But I won't be actually talking about Earth much on this stream, at least until the printer's up and running, because uh, that's gonna be Friday. Okay, why aren't you screwing? Okay, let's see here. Here we got a screw that doesn't want to screw in. What's going on here? Okay, let's see. This screw doesn't want to go in. What is going on here? What is going on here? And Luke gifted 20 community memberships. Holy shit. Thank you, Luke. Cheers. Okay, what's going on here? Okay, let's start, maybe start with the bottom one here. I think everyone in the chat's gonna be a member by the end of the stream at the rate things are going. I mean, I'm not gonna complain. You all get to hang out during the member stream. Okay. Oh, I see it, okay. So this is a little bit of a kerfuffle here. Okay, how can we fix this? How can we fix this? Okay, so on, here's what's going on. This is a little bit of an oversight. Um, there are two screws that hold the power supply on to the printer, okay? And I'm just making sure this is the right way around, yep. Um, this screw here, you can see the screw go right through. This one, there's this little gray shield that seems to be blocking it. So let's, is it just kind of in the way that we can kind of just move it out of the way? Is this just a, okay, yeah. So that shield just floats. It's just a plastic shield, one second here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's just a plastic anti, um, or uh, shield for like conductive or whatever. So I just slid it out of the way and we should be good here. There we go. Okay, we're good. We're good. This polymaker posts their filament with average. Uh, 1.75 millimeters plus minus, um, I don't know, some amount. <laughs> um, every polymaker filament I fill, pushed into my machines has come out just fine. Stream is going good. Super impressed with this so far. Okay, so we've got that installed. The instructions are actually really nice. Um, 
Install the power supply on the right profile of the machine. Gantry with two M420s, tighten the screws, okay. Install the extruder kit on the slide base with three M35 screws, tighten the screw, okay. M35s. Here they are. So these are small, so don't lose them. Oh geez, did I miss more? Wayne! Gifted five community memberships. Cheers, thanks Wayne. Color's almost like Polymaker Teal. Um, do I have Polymaker Teal? I might have some somewhere, let me. Somewhere, I have some somewhere. I don't know where it's at, but it is kind of close. It's a little more muted, I would say. Okay, so this is held on with uh, four screws. So this is kind of cool, cause it's, uh, if you wanted to swap tool heads, it doesn't look like it would be too hard cause you got a common plate here for mounting everything too. So that's kind of cool to see. I don't know if you're hearing, call and give to five community memberships, jeez. You're all gonna be here for the member stream uh, next week, are ya? You better all be here for the member stream at this rate. I'm trying to find my other, other Allen key. On top of toasty. Oh, there it is, okay. So this is Polyterra Teal. Um, this is a little bit more blue. Also, the lighting in this room is uh, crap, so. Okay. Okay, so this attaches really simply. There's three screws that attach it to the, uh, the mounting plate here. And the screws in the plastic are uh, not heat set. They're the same type of, they're what we know as heat set. You can actually injection mold them into the part and that's what these look like. So it is indexed in. Um, so it's keyed in and then you have three screws that hold it on and that's as sturdy as it needs to be. Bruh FPV 279, cheers. Yeah, Canada is a filament desert at times. I, I love when people are like, oh, you need to check this filament. I'm like, I'm not spending $50 a spool. <laughs> oh, look, you install it there, okay? Okay, please turn the aircraft switch on the control box hanging plate to the left to unlock it. Oh, okay, one second here. The aircraft switch. Okay, so um, let's see here. Ba, 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 ba. There we go. Okay, so um, it, it's like a little space shuttle. So that unlocks it, or that locks it. That unlocks it. You take this guy, and it looks like it slides on there push it down and that locks it. And there you go. There's your controller board attached or mounted at least. Yeah, it, it is a, a little space shuttle thing. Uh, micro SD slot is on the top by the way. So you do have the micro SD Clark slot. It's right here. And then a USB uh, micro is right there. Okay, install the control box on the hanging plate. Okay, we just did that. Okay, install the filament on the top with M510s. Looks like it goes okay. So if we got Saval like that, it goes like this. Okay. Oh, no, wrong screw. Where is the big one? I had it over here. There it is. 
Oh wait, no. I'm looking at it backwards. It goes this way. So I got the printer spun around. A 90 degree USB cable. Yep, you could use a 90 degree. Um, these aren't fully sealed extrusions. So while on the back, you can't do anything. Um, you could put a, a T-nut in here. The thing is you gotta be careful of clearing the motor as it comes in up and down, but depending on where it goes, you could easily mount a Raspberry Pi somewhere if you really wanted to, I'm sure you could, or just drill and tap it like a boss. Okay. And then we put this thing on. This is very Ender-esque for the spool holder, but it works on an Ender, it'll work on here. Although this right here will limit you. Um, let's use the Polymaker spool. So Polymaker spool fits, but if you were to get one of the big Chungus spools, not even big Chungus, um, Let's see, Replitech. So these are 600 millimeter spools. These fit and clear. Okay, so you should be okay. As long as you're not running like the 2.5 kg spools, these are like the biggest non-massive spools I have and they fit. So you should be okay. You should actually be okay with most spool sizes there. I was worried because it is a little canted. Have I seen the seven axis 3D printer concept? I've seen five axis, I did a video on one, but... Um, Okay, connections. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is nice. So it breaks out all the connections, where they go, and color pictures. So please check your voltage, your power connector. These are all color pictures too. So that's actually, I like to see that. I like to see that. So. So we'll connect our extruder. Now, normally, I, I will admit though, I'm not a huge fan of these like um, ribbon cable connectors or tool heads. I'm just, I'm just not a fan of them. It's just something for me. But if you look, um, it does have a stress relief built in. So you got the locking poles here, but you do have this little, uh, I don't know if you can see it on the overhead here. It's got this little like clip here in the body that kind of clips into. So that is kind of nice. You got the locking poles and then you do have that to kind of, so as much as I'm not a fan of these, this is a very good implementation of that method for the ribbon cable. Okay. Uh, X motor goes in like show. Got okay. Z1. Okay. Z2. Uh, this connects to expansion three. Power. I'm assuming the other side is soldered. If one side soldered, I'm assuming the other one is. So I'm not gonna open them both up to double check. Voltage is 115. Connected X, Y, or X, Z1, Z2. Uh, y should already be attached. It is, it's still connected from the factory. So that's good there. And there we go. And that should be it. So, let's make sure we get full travel with the bed. We're good there. Okay, screen did turn on. That's gonna happen when you move it mo around by hand. Um, Ooh. Oh, nope, that's overhead. There we go. Okay. There we 
go. A new tire and Rage Rabbit Care Feeder after breakfast hall of sensor or not. Um, if you can do it, at least last I checked into it. It's been a while since I played with my Rage Rabbit. <laughs> Spool holders backwards. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> that, my friends, is called engagement. Let's be honest, you're going to get a fingerprint on it at one point, you might as well get it on right away. This makes a little bit more sense. Okay, there we go. Okay, so extruder is that. It is a planetary geared extruder. Um, we do have one connection unused on the tool head board. I don't know what it's for, but it is unused. Um, nothing in the manual about it that I see. Do have our inductive probe. Um, as for the teeth, can you get at them? Let's double check here. Because you want to be able to clear any jam. So how much, how far can you get in with just opening it up? Let's, okay, so if you take the spring off. Okay. So it looks like it is the, uh, I don't know if you can see there. It's the big BMG gears. So it's not the little BMG gears you see in a BMG. It's the bigger gears like you would see in an orbiter. It is a planetary geared extruder. Okay, and you can adjust the tension with the spring. So that's uh, that's good. And then if you have like a, a serious jam where you gotta disassemble it, um, you would have to uh, disassemble it. Got good spring tension there. Belts are pretty good from the factory, I would say. Okay, power time. Okay. Uh, no one seems to do it. So the problem with runout sensors, um, so with Clipper, for example, the problem with the runout sensor on Clipper is because Clipper sends batched commands to the controller board, you cannot actually have a runout sensor right above your extruder. Because what'll happen is it'll run out, it'll send the signal, but it takes, you have to wait for the next batch of commands to be sent to the MCU. So what can happen is, is if it's like right above the extruder, like on a Prusa, a Prusa, depending on what movement it was doing, like say it was doing like a really long straight line, it could actually extrude it past your extruder gears and then it gets a signal like, oh, pause, and it's too late. It's already fed in past the extruder gear and you have to take it apart to get it out. So um, with Clipper, it's better to have it like usually like up by the spool holder. That's where I do it when I do play around with it, but I don't play around with it too often because um, I, I just don't. Okay. On. Saval. Saval SV06 ready. Okay, no media, bed leveling, prepare, configuration, info screen. Change filament about printer. Main. Oh, actually, let's see. About printer, printer info. Saval SV06 V1.8.2. Now, is that means it's running Marlin 1.8.2? I don't know. Thermistors. There you go. Runaway watch on. So I'm assuming that's runaway protection. Um, for those new to the channel, hi, welcome. Consider becoming subbed. Help support the channel. But um, I don't dabble with Marlin too often. It's been a hot minute since I've actually set up Marlin. Um, so usually the only time I play with Marlin is on these machines. It's all made of plastic. Well, I mean, the plastic parts are made out of plastic, but the metal parts are made out of metal. And a screen is a screen is a screen. I mean, 
I don't even use the screens on half my printers. I don't even have screens on half my printers. Okay, so let's see where we're at. Oh, this is nice. It gives you a little flow chart of where if you want to get to each each menu on the screen where to go. So if you want like store settings, you go to like temperature, preheat, store settings. Oh, that's cool. So it gives you a, it gives you a little breakdown of how to find all the settings on the interface. That's nice to see. Again, for the I'm looking at this at somebody who's never used a 3D printer before. So like a nice little flow chart breakdown on how to get to all the settings in the controller board from the screen is uh is actually kind of nice. Yeah, Big John O. Yeah, this is actually kind of something nice to see. Like, and honestly, the English in here has been fine. Okay, press the knob. Uh, go to main, bed leveling. Okay, auto Z align. So it's probably gonna do the, uh, I'm assuming we're gonna do the Prusa method here because I only have one Z uh, driver. Um, proceed. So it's homing. Wait for leveling. I, I'm, by the way, I am following the manual. This is how I do it with these machines because I go at it by somebody who's never done it before. So, you know, normally I would probably just throw it as uh, printed and let it roll, but we're gonna see if the manual has good instructions for somebody to set this up for the first time because at the price point this is, this is probably going to be a good option for somebody getting into 3D printing, especially because it has bed leveling. It has a flex plate. It's It's got the bells and whistles you kind of want in a modern 3D printer. So go make a sandwich. Yeah, it all has a very slow Z, which is kind of what we expect. Um, I think it's so for build volume. What do we have to work with here? What do we have to work with? I think it's 220 by 220 by 250. 220 by 220 by 250. So that's that's good. That's that's relatively normal. Okay. Probe. Probe worked. Okay, wait for leveling. It's heating up the nozzle. The machine will auto home first, then the entire ax ax axis will rise to the top for calibration, then descend to auto home. So it didn't do the up unless it missed something, but it is what it is. I'm, I'm assuming because there's some nice chalky stops up here and here that it was supposed to go all the way up and actually like tram out like a Prusa does, but this didn't go high enough. I don't think it'll be an issue. Um. We'll see how it comes, because the bed mesh will take care of it. Let's be honest, the bed mesh will take care of any slight tilt in it. But if you were really wanting to make sure before you run this, have it up higher to the top here so that when it does do that upper Z movement, that both um, ends of the gantry top out against the top there so that it's trammed. So what are we doing? We're waiting for the bed to heat up. So it's heating up so we could do the, the offset. So taller than it, yeah, because the Prusa is what, two, 20 by 250 by 230 or something like that. Um, I did push the button and told me to. I said auto Z align. Tripods, 499, cheers. Sam had his farewell pancakes. That's good, 210, yeah, 210. It's only 210 in the Z on a Prusa, really? So I like how, for example, the Anacubic Viper has two end stops on top as Z works for trimming. So here's the thing. Um, if you have independent Z motors, what you can do is you could use your probe, probe one side of the bed, probe one side of the bed, and then it would adjust the motor so that they're equal. If you only have one Z motor for two independent Z lead screws like this, what you do is you ram that thing into the top so that both, bottom, both sides bottom out on the top of the gantry and then you hope the top of the gantry is trammed out to the bottom. That's how Prusa does it. Remember, the Prusa is an extrusion. Yeah, they have, um, um, their, their frame is a single metal piece. Okay, so we're waiting on the bed to heat. Okay. 
Did I hit the right button? I could have sworn I hit auto Z align. Let me double check. Because the bed's heating up right now. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I hit the wrong button. I think I hit, yeah, probe Z offset or something. Or maybe it did move up and I missed it. I don't know. Matt Shammy. See if we'll do a G34 I5 T. Um, I have no way of talking to it, so I don't know if I would be able to check that. Prusa does have dual Z, but one one driver. So both Z motors move in tandem, like on this machine. Tram using one, two, three blocks. <laughs> yeah, after clicking auto home for the first time, the machine will preheat. So the nozzle's at 120, the bed's at 60. After the machine stop goes, click Z probe offset to adjust the distance. Okay. So where is my tramming paper? Where is my magic tramming paper? Oh no, I cleaned up everything. Did I throw out my tramming paper? I will use this. This is a piece of paper. This is now my tramming paper. Hey there, greetings from Germany to another 20 months. Jeez, time flies when you're having fun, eh? I safely stored it somewhere. Yes, sanity. Yes, yes. Oh, and it is sensorless homing. Because you can hear the thunk. <laughs> okay. So it's done the probe. Okay. Okay, bed leveling. Yeah, I probed Z, Z offset, so I, I did it backwards. So let me, let's do Z align. There we go. Yeah, I did it backwards. I hit probe Z offset, not probe Z align or auto Z align. So now we got to go all the way to the top and we could do the, uh, the Prusa away. But also this has end stops, sensorless. So maybe it's doing the sensorless for the Z. We'll see. I want to see how it does this. Sens sensorless is fine. Sensorless homing is fine for all axes except for Z because your XY home, Sensorless is only good within a full step. Um, so you're fine sensorless homing on your XY. Your Z, you don't get enough accuracy to be worth it. Why is it so slow? Because it's lead screws, dual lead screws. And they aren't constrained at the top, by the way. So they're free floated at the top, which is good. I would have liked to see the be integrated lead screws to the motor. I don't like couplings, but it is what it is. Okay. There we go. So now we're trammed out. <laughs> okay. Go to the middle, come down. There we go. Now we're trammed out. It's an ANET clone. I think it's a little better than an ANET clone. Let's be honest, guys. Let, let's be a little honest. Rookie B, hello. Yeah, the Mark Yeah, the Mark 3 board only has four steppers. And see, they're actually smart. They have it the offset set so that it's probing in the middle with the probe. You'd be surprised how often that isn't the case. Yeah, TR8 lead screws. Yeah, they're TR8s. Come on, go beep, and then we tram again, and then we move on to the next step. Okay. Okay, bed leveling. Okay. Auto home. Leveling, probe Z offset. Okay. Uh, 
bed leveling auto Z did that bed leveling auto home did that probe Z offset okay so now we got to probe the Z offset which So we're just, it starts up high. We're like one mil up from the bed or one millimeter. There we go. Okay. 1.2 mil. Hey, door settings. Ah, it beeped at me. Why'd you beep at me? I'm assuming that was the store settings noise. Okay. So store settings. Okay. And now we click level bed. There we go. Settings stored. Yep. Okay. There we go. So we've trimmed it out. We've set our Z offset and now we're doing our bed level. And now we got to load some filament. What filament are we going to use? Is this blue? Polymaker, Polylite ASA. No, we don't want to do ASA. Why do I have two spools of Polylite ASA out? Anyways, um, let's see. Polylite, Polylite, all the Polylite. <sighs> Polylite, Polylite. Let's see, Polymax. Polylite PLA. Do we want what color do we want? Red or silver? You guys want red or gray? I'm gonna need the gray. Let's do red. The printer is blue. Let's do red. Polylite red. So polylite PLA Pro. Oh no. Oh no, good. These aren't the resealable bags. People get angry when I when I cut in. Oh wait, these are the resealable bags. Oh well. Settings. Main. Okay, so. Prepare, move axis, move Z. Let's just move it up to 100. No, no I hit the wrong button. Ah, uh, it's gonna home. <laughs> Stop. And then it's gonna auto home. God dang it. No, now it's gonna home. Shoot. I the wrong button. Red will go faster. Yeah. The white grid on the flex plate is supposedly leaving marks on the print. Well, we'll figure that out in a second. If it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, I mean, who looks at the bottoms of their prints anyways? Looks orange. Blame uh, my awesome uh, color correcting. Here, move axis, move Z, move Z up to, oh, no, 100 millimeters. Okay. Me. Prepare, preheat PLA, preheat PLA. Okay. So we're preheating for PLA. 
When the temperature rises to the target filament, cut the front end out of 45, then insert it in the feed port 20 millimeters and turn the wheel clockwise until you see the filament out of the nozzle. Okay, again, we're following the manual, see what it says. So it's preheating for 185. Usually I like to print my PLA at like 210. A lot of the better quality PLAs print better at a, better than 180. Okay, so. Probably gonna have to disable steppers. Yeah. Okay, so this doesn't bite. <laughs> yeah, this, this doesn't bite, okay. Move axis, move extruder. And well, it is sucking the filament in. not be hot enough for this stuff. Yeah, let me heat it up a bit. Motion, temperature. Yeah, let's try like 215. Yeah, it's saying just turn this knob to, uh, but it's it's not. Okay. Okay, it's not extruding. What's going on here? Let's see what's going on. Well, it's melting. Let's try something else here. Trying to get the feet in. Let's see here. Feed path issue. Let's see here. I do have PLA, right? I don't have some super high temperature stuff. Yeah, it's good. Hopefully it actually got into the feed path. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't quite getting into the feed path. It was like skipping off the, uh, it was banking off the curb. There we go. Now it's actually loaded. There we go. Okay. So now it's loaded. Okay. Main, main, main. Change filament, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's see. So what do we got on the card here? Let's see what we got on Devil Brand. Yeah, it does have a, it's a bimetallic hot end. So it comes with a NetTac 8 gig SD card. Let's see what we got for demo prints. If I can load this in the right way. 
Media inserted. Print from media. So we have a dog and we have a Benchy. Well, we gotta go with the dog, right? We gotta go with the dog. Print the dog. Yes. There we go. We gotta print the doggo. Well, this is it. Polymaker Orange. This is Polymaker Red. So the, the default temperatures are pretty low. I'm going to bump them up because this stuff doesn't like printing at 250 or 185. 175. Oh, geez. 175 for the first layer. Yeah, we're going to bump that up a bit. Okay, so filament's coming out. That's actually kind of... Looking at a de decent clip. So the first layer is a little low. First layer is a little low, but we could fix that in uh, next print. <laughs> so let's see here. So it does have their own version of Cura on the uh the sd card um i probably won't play with that i try to avoid installing every single manufacturer's random skin version of cura um unless i absolutely have to so we'll probably just honestly i'll probably use like a prusa profile for this because to be honest it's pretty close So it does have Z-Hop enabled. Print speed better, looks better than homing. Yeah, usually homing is usually run at a pretty conservative. Like, you want your homing to be a little slow so that, you know, when you turn your machine on, you hit home and you realize, oh shit, I left a print on the bed. You have time to kind of hit that smash button and cancel it. Okay, so first layer is a little smushed. I'll, I'll admit first layer is a little smushed. Um, we are looking at a, I don't know how, we're 2% in. So if somebody wants to do the math and see if we'll finish by five. Actually sounds pretty noisy. Um, you got the noise canceling. There's a slight rattle coming from somewhere, but I don't know what. And it actually doesn't sound too bad. Like, this desk is not dampened or anything. So, don't forget, um, Saval is doing a giveaway of this printer and some goodies. Link in the description. Polymaker is also doing a giveaway of a spool of filament, because we do that every stream. Link also in the description. And if you want to know more about this printer or to pick up one for yourself, link in the description as well. Also, while you're down there, don't forget to like that smash button. If you want to help support the channel, Content I create, things I do, there's links in the description as well. Consider becoming a channel member. Also, join the community Discord. Every month we do a challenge. This month it's Halloween, so dress up or show me your movie props or game props or whatever. You can win some more filament. Join the community. Uh, filament since I ordered it two weeks ago during the promotion. Um, if you're having an issue, Blue Jay, open a ticket on their Discord. But depending on where you are in the world, it, it sometimes takes a little bit. Is there no music? I got the music going. It, it's just lo-fi. I can turn it up a little bit, but it's just lo-fi background music. Which country this... Do you know which country this company is from? Um, Shenzhen. So China. 
So let's see, how's this coming along? So this is the demo print. Demo prints are always, why do you print the SD card demo print? Because that's what the company put on there and that's what they're using to show off their printer. So I, I kind of always like to start with the demo print off the SD card because that's what they included. Now the problem is, you know, who knows? It might be tuned for this specific white PLA. Probably not, but. Are the Z motors independent? No, they are tied together so they would do a single Z driver. So they are not independent, unfortunately. Let's see, can we get a better? Right about there. There. Let me go get see if I can get a light. Not that light. Okay, you come with me. At one point, I cleaned this room and I had room to work. That point is long gone. Let's see if we can play with the focus and get this just a little bit better quality of an image. Okay, mobile. Camera control. Turn off auto focus, focus. Of course OBS update moved everything, okay. There we go. There we go, a little bit clearer. You'll see more as it gains up, as it goes up. From the back with the fan covering everything up. That is true here, let's let's slide this over. I wanna try and get a side view. Trying to watch this while working from home and my wife is watching evil. What's evil? Lots of swearing coming out of my TV. I don't swear that much. Um, so yeah, so let's go back to the build or the, my review. Okay. This is not a review of the printer. This is my initial impressions on a live unboxing. So pretty much if you want to know everything that's happened with this printer, you can see because it's all been live so far. Um, documentation, I give it a good mark. The actual manual to put this together was very well thought out. It covered the basics. Um, the assembly went together very well. Everything was in the box. Um, very beginner friendly, I will say. Um, the instructions, I like the, the actual has good English too. Um, like, yeah, everything went together well. Everything seems well built. 
nothing that kind of stood out as dangerous. The only critique I've had on the mechanics of the printer after just assembling it is the magnet for the flex plate seems a little weak. So if you are printing ABS on this, because as you get higher temperature on the bed, the magnet will get weaker. You may run into issues, but the magnet is replaceable. Give you a secret code for the contest. Link in the description. It's in there. Um, so yeah, I, I will say so far, I'm I'm really impressed. Um, things I might be able to critique in the future, the fact that the part cooling fan is sucking up warm air from the bed to blow on the part. It is what it is. Um, they have this little knob here. The probe is on the other side, and this is the actual hot end fan because it blows in and it blows across the back here where the heat sink is for the, the hot end. So I'm sure there will be community mods to do your, you know, your good old fashioned thingiverse dual 5015 blower monstrosity tumor things that everyone likes to put on their, their bed flingers um, at some point. But uh, yeah. Um, as for how fast is it going? Wow, 100%. I don't have, um, the readout doesn't give me a speed. It, it It's moving at a, I would say, a normal fast-ish bed flinger speed. Interested print head design. Yeah, it, it, it's not. It's got a breakout board in it. There is one extra port that's unfilled. I don't know what it's for. Um, I don't believe it has a runout sensor in it, unfortunately. So I, I let me check the website. I don't believe it has a runout sensor. That might be the only thing this thing doesn't have is a runout sensor. But there is an open port on the board, so I'm sure you can add one if you really wanted to. Um, but I don't think there's a built-in runout sensor. I think that's the only thing that's really lacking on this machine. And, you know, as long as you know how much filament you're feeding it, it's, it's not a huge machine. This isn't a machine you're probably killing whole spools at once on. Um, it does have um, resume printing. We can always check that, but let's be honest, I turn the printer off, I turn the printer on, and we resume from where we left. Um, so what printer is this? Saval SV06. How does it compare to an ANET? Well, as you can see uh, from this handy diagram right here, uh, let me pull it up here. Um, as you can see by the lack of fire, that this is not um, in the same league as an ANET. So, yeah. Orient the bearing properly on the rods of the factory. Um, I would have to disassemble it to check that, which is not something I really want to do. Um, you could tell after a while, one way you could do is you could put a little bit of grease on the bit rods, move the bearings over it, and you can kind of tell where the uh, the wear pattern is for the uh, rods after a while. So you, you can tell where the bearings are after a while. You just gotta run it long enough to, for them to kind of leave a little mark. Hey, John. We want fire. Did that seriously kill my main camera? <laughs> my main camera froze <laughs> when I pulled out a lighter. It knew. Did it seriously just shut down? What the heck happened? Oh, it's the sparks, puts off weird RF. That better not have killed the camera or I'm gonna be severely disappointed. Um, 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 one second here. Don't tell me Okay, it, it's, I'm getting an image on the camera. There's an image on the camera. 
Like the back of the camera's got an image. Um, overhead, okay. Okay, that was the overhead camera I reset. Okay, so that was the overhead camera I reset. Okay, let me try the other one. So where's the other one? Okay, here we go. Hey, okay. So note to self, the RF from going like this to get a little fire going, because 3D Musketeer, Musketeer wanted fire, um, and I almost took out my A6300. Um, don't don't play with barbecue lighters near your printers, because apparently that'll make the cam link trip out and you gotta unplug it and plug it back in. Okay. That got my heart going. I love how as soon as I turned it on, it turned off. Uh, that that scared the crap out of me for a minute there. Um, 3D Musketeers. Yeah, that, that the fire almost took out the camera. That would have been very bad. I I'm not in the I'm not in the market, and the budget isn't looking for a new camera right now. Yeah, an A6300 is just sort of spending to blow up. I did buy it used. Um, it it is used. My my A6400 is uh, videos. So this is what I use for video. So when I record videos in the room, I use the A6400. The A6300 is just for streaming. Cause it, the, the, I bought it used and the, the screen on the back isn't the greatest on it. It doesn't flip up. Yes, that's right. I have an A6300 and an A6400. Why? Because I'm lazy and I don't want to take that off the mount, unplug the, the 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 HDMI output, and take out the dummy battery every time I want to record a video not from this camera angle. So that's why I bought like two near identical cameras. And then overhead is an A5100, which used to be the main camera before I went to 4K, which I went to 4K so that I can do punch-ins like this and not lose quality because you're seeing 1440p. I record videos, yes! There was a video last Friday. There was a video before that with the Mando armor that none of you watched. Um, and there will be five videos from Earth, hopefully. Either two or three videos from booth interviews and then a dedicated Death Racer video and a dedicated printed solid video. Where, speaking of, where's David? Yeah, you should be getting, um, the Earth videos will come out as I get them done. Um, hopefully the Death Razor video this Saturday and then next Saturday is the printed solid or just might move. Anyone else video just wake out possibly. F, what do you mean F? Hello? I'm out of sync? What do you mean I'm out of sync? I'm, I should be in sync. Good now? Good now. Okay. There we go. Back to about wow. Okay. What time is Joel streaming at? Four? I don't, I, I'll try. I don't want to be streaming while he's streaming. I, I don't like streaming while other people are streaming. I try to avoid it if I can, but. We're around 30 minutes, okay. Well, we're gonna go until the dog finishes. So Joel, if you're watching, don't print the dog, print the Benchy. So we'll have, well, that way we don't have to each print it ourselves. Uh, deltas have no point versus X, Y. Okay, here's the thing. Deltas do kind of have a point, but they're, they're, they're not as easy to justify as they used to be. They used to be like, you know, if you want to go fast, you built a Delta, but now Core XYs go fast. But I mean like, Thanks to auto drop and not wanting to bring his stuff back, um, I have this. Yes, this is as, you know, this is it. 
Um, so I'm thinking projects for this. This is a monoprice Delta. We're going to talk about that on Friday. But um, yeah, auto drop. If you get a chance, check out auto drop. I haven't really looked into it. Like I know what it is, but it's not really the thing like I would use. So I've, I've I haven't played with one, but you don't want to bring these back because they're all old and doesn't need them. So a bunch of us got deltas at Murph. Earth doesn't have justification. Well, solar power printer, anyone? That's what I'm thinking. We'll see. Oops. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. If you water it, does it grow? Um, I could try. I mean, the power supply is out, so it won't be that big of an issue. <laughs> what I get for searching Twitter. Uh. Found the conspiracy. Ba -da -da -da. I am wearing my conspiracy apron. Dip in mineral spirits. The problem is I don't think filament would work too well. The problem is you, you you would get good cooling of your heat sink, but you would also cool your heater block. So I don't think you could print in mineral spirits too well. I need me a good conspiracy apron. <laughs> uh, that the AMS isn't good with flexibles. I they they flat out told us bamboo flat out told us the AMS is not meant for flexibles so is this a BQ clipper stock one no this this is a Sabal SV06 as it says right in the very the first two words of the video description what printer do I like the most um my Vorons probably I was sponsored by print and solid which is a complete separate entity from Prusa, although it's owned by Prusa. Voron's not Prusa. I know the guy on the Voron team likes Vorons over Prusas. And um, yeah, I like all printers equally, except for Creality's. Just because they gave up. Creality had the market. Like, let's be honest, Creality had the in but they just got lazy. Creality could be number one, but they got lazy because they, they had everyone. Everyone was buying Enders and then they just kept making Enders and everyone moved past them. Come on, Creality. It's your own fault. You done goofed. You done goofed. You dropped the ball. The internet, not everything on the internet is true. Like some guy on the internet was saying that aprons hurt your neck and you can't move around in them. And um, I don't know, I wear this nine hours a week and I could do a full squat while wearing it. So not everything on the internet is true. Ed, hello. How much is a Voron switch wire? Depends on the kit or if you're self-sourcing. Um, a good kit would be the LDO kit. And then you get the CR30. I've never played with the CR30 and I really don't have a design to. Uh, what do you think about the modular heat bed on the Prusail XL gimmick or game changer? Um, not really a game changer, but it's a nice thing to have, I would say, because it has to do with basically power usage, especially now if you're in Europe, power usage is a thing you're probably worrying about. Only heating up the active areas. Um, also, the gap built in between the different sections would prevent warping. So it, it's not like it solves world hunger, but it's a nice thing to have. Power savings again, but... Uh rewarding hotspot yeah it, it, it's an incremental upgrade it's not you know and here's the thing i actually i didn't do any videos at the prusa booth um because all of saturday i didn't think they had anything new i walked by i saw they had the xl and i'm like okay that's the xl i saw at murph um it turns out the xl oh, i shouldn't be talking about this because I'm, I'm friday is the after earth stream but the xl they had there actually had the new tool head on it so it had the uh instead of the cycloidal gear they went to planetary gearing and it actually it looks really nice um I'll, I'll talk about it Friday more, but yeah. No luck on the Ultimaker yet? Not yet.
If you wear an apron backwards, it's a cape. Yep. <laughs> Had nozzle LEDs? I'm not sure if it did. It was like the lights were all on there, so I didn't really see. Start, I fell asleep, long day, this looks interesting. Um, I'm actually really impressed with this printer right now. I, I am, the print obviously, it's still printing, so we can't judge quality yet. I mean, let's, let, let's be honest, the, the printer could be the shiniest thing in the world and cost two cents, but if it can't print, it can't print. But um, so far, so good, and you know, for the price, I, I don't know, can't really complain. So, did I resurrect the bamboo? No, we might do that Friday. Opera cloaks. Ooh. Well, no, shouldn't like I'm on the Voron team, so shouldn't it be like an apron, like or an apron? Shouldn't it be like a cloak, like a black cloak with a hood, and you know, because we're in a cult and all that. S1 Pro would be a market blast, but overpriced. How much is the S1 Pro? Oh, yeah, I got cables everywhere. One second here. You go over there. So here's the thing. Yes, right now, this printer on is on for 239 US. That's early bird. This is a 299 printer. So when I compare it to other things, it is a 299 printer. Okay. So the S1 Pro by now 407. I'm assuming that's Canadian or is that American? 407 American. And it doesn't have the filament run out. Oh, it does have a filament run out sensor. Let's be honest, it's a 10 cent micro switch. It, filament runout center doesn't add anything to cost. It's a little bit of wire and a 10 cent micro switch. Um, so other than that, does it have a bed probe? Yeah, it does have a bed probe, CR1, CR touch, whatever, and a fancy touch screen that doesn't really change your print quality at all. Yeah, this is, you know, about a hundred bucks cheaper. So. Plus, it's not a V-wheel. Because, you know, V-wheels, you know, on aluminum extrusions, aluminum extrusions are not a precision motion thing. They're extruded aluminum. They're okay, but they can twist. And if you get twisted aluminum extrusions, you're going to have a bad time. Matt Shammy, $5. Cheers. Wait, I joined a cult and didn't get a, I joined a cult hood? No, 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 no. Because if, if you join the cult, you don't tell people you're in a cult. That's how you know you're in the cult. It's like, what's the, what's the, um, the skit from, uh, King of the Hill? They roll up. Is this the cult? We're not a cult. We're a free loving community. Yep, this is the cult. So it, as far as we know, it doesn't have tin wires. So the wires, there is crimped ferrules on them. They might be tinned under the crimp. I don't know. I'd have to take it apart and like cut one of the crimps off to look. Um, but even then, the fact that I see ferrules is a marked improvement. And if you don't know why they're tinned, Okay, this is why. Uh, this is why. So think about it. When you're when you're when you're building your Voron, right? You're sitting there, you got your all your wire, and you're cutting it, you're crimping it, you're tinning it. The people, you know, when a company makes a machine like this, they're not cutting the wires by hand. They go, okay, we need a thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand 24 gauge wires that are red that are 10 centimeters long. And then what they do, this machine here cuts the wires and tins them because instead of twisting the little, the, the, the frayed wires at the end, it just drops them in a tin bath, okay? So this machine, it cuts them to length, it strips them, it tins them, it throws them in a bin. That's why, so they tin it, so that way you don't have all those, the, the random wire that could cause a short. So it's all done on a machine. That's why they're tinned, okay? Is it the right way to do it? No. Is it the wrong way to do it? No. It's another way to do it. It's, you know, in, in terms of best to worst, it's not the best, but it is an acceptable practice. Like, it is a thing to tin your wires. Now, over heat cycles, there is a potential I can loosen, 
not in all environments, not all wires, not all connections, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It is nice to see ferals. And it's nice, but this is why, because they buy wires by the hundred thousand to millions, pre-cut, pre-made by a machine. And some guy making a minimum wage and assembly line in Shenzhen is just slapping these in a machine. That's why they're like that. So it's not that they're unsafe. They're just using the cheap mass production method. So is it acceptable for mains wire? Um, you can solder mains wire. It is a thing. The thing is, I most people recommend the home gamer don't do it. Use a crimp connection for mains wire. Um, I don't know what the mains wire solution looks like inside the box. We didn't open up the box to see if it is a, a connection. And I don't know if I can... Yeah, there's no holes to look at it. So I'd, I'd have to take that off to take a look at it. But um, I'm assuming... I'm hoping they got the uh, crimped on spade connectors. But it should be, so... Uh, so besides the top mounted spool, the printer looks pretty damn good. Yeah, and top mounted spool is a thing. Technically, you don't want, you know, higher, the more weight you have higher up, the more likely it is to rock, um, especially on a bed flinger, because you can get it, you know, you can get it shaking on like something big, like a CR30. So, you know, you can always throw it in your rep box or just wall mount it or just figure out a different way of mounting the spool. It's not a huge deal. I think I saw Feral Bueller stay off. What's up with the Delta Monoprice Delta Mini? I'll talk about it Friday. Friday is the after Earth stream. So the after action report for Earth will be Friday. Don't think anyone printing on this machine is printing fast. Yeah, I've, uh, I've moved away from speed printing because a lot of what I print is either done within eight hours or it's done within a day. And if it's between eight hours and a day, I really don't care because odds are it's gonna finish while I'm sleeping. And if a print finishes at 2 a.m. and a print finishes at 7 a.m. and I don't wake up till 8 a.m., does it really matter what time it finished? So I've kind of moved away from speed printing, honestly. After Earth is a movie with Will Smith. Exactly. Exactly. Oh no, the knife that I keep in my apron has a, uh, a loose thing, I gotta fix it. Let's find that. There we go. Tighten this back up. So that way I can put it safely in my apron for future use. There we go. Okay, and now I put you back in my apron. Because it does come in handy to have, you know, some simple tools on you at all times. Does ANET even still make printers? Speed quality balance, exactly. Uh, the bamboo. Um, talk to anyone that's actually been running a bamboo for a while for anything structural, like the Durf Racers. Um, it prints fast and it has issues with layer adhesion. Because you're printing so fast, you're not getting great layer adhesion. It's, uh, there's a reason I still haven't print, like I've printed Voron parts, I got them here. Um, I've done some, nope, not this box. Um, where is it, where is it? I have a box of demo Voron parts that I printed on um, the bamboo. And I don't know where I put it. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so I printed some Voron parts. These are legacy parts, I think. I printed them on the bamboo and, uh, okay, these ones aren't too bad. But depending on the plastic, uh, people weren't getting great layer adhesion. Oh, because I printed these ones slower than normal, that's why. Yeah, these are ASA, I believe. But yeah. Um, if you print so fast, you actually have issues with layer adhesion with some materials, PLA especially, I believe. The bamboo fanboys brigade in my fr Friday video. I believe it. Some people believe the bamboo is like the, 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 the next, you know, the is going to make a big splash like the original Mark III did. And it's a good printer for a thousand bucks. It's also the loudest printer I own. Legit. My Voron 1.0 that is built to 2016 spec with ramps 1.0 and DRVs is quieter than this machine. This machine is loud. It, it, it rattles. It rattles and it vibrates. You go that fast in a, a plastic enclosure. And yeah, you know, there's aluminum on the outside, but the, the whole frame is plastic pretty much. There's plastic everywhere on it. The AMS works okay. It's slow. 
a lot of wastage, but that's what happens when you have single nozzle multi-material. Um, you can get replacement flex plates. Um, the tool head jams up like every other tool head. You'll eventually get a clog. It, it's the LiDAR isn't LiDAR and it's kind of gimmicky. It's not bad. I'm not saying the bamboo isn't a bad printer, but it's just another good thousand dollar printer. Same like the V400. It's another good thousand dollar printer. Heck, the Prusa Mark III is slow. Still a relatively good thousand dollar printer. So what do I consider fast? 100, 150? Depends on the printer, depends what you're printing. Like this, I consider a normal print speed. My, my normal Voron profile is 30, 60, 120, usually. Actually, I think bump didn't fill up to 150 and inner walls to like 80. But outer walls, I usually only print like 45. Everything on the inside, yeah. My VZ bot uh, got much louder when I converted to four minutes. So when you add motors and you go fast, you get loud. There is no way around that. Like if you have, okay, if you come up to me and ask me, should I buy a bamboo? It's gonna live in my bedroom. I will flat out tell you no, because you will never print at night with it. And you'll never be in your room while the printer is running and not hear it. it it's a loud printer. What if it is not LiDAR? It's not LiDAR. There's no way it has LiDAR at that price. Look how much a, 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 an iPhone LiDAR module costs and the accuracy of it. I appreciate it's helping. Oh yeah, all here's the thing. A lot of printers are getting better. Like look at this thing. This is 239 right now, regular 299. And it's got all the bells and whistles of a Prusa Mark III. Except for a runout sensor, which is a 10 cent micro switch. It's a line laser and camera IRC, not LiDAR. Exactly. And this has got LiDAR, load sensors, and all kinds of bells and whistles and I get as good first layers of this thing was a $3 PL08 Pro. So, is what it is. And we think we're hitting the limits. You can only melt and re-solidify plastic with acceptable quality so fast. And we're already at that limit. Basically, in my opinion, what's gonna come, what's the, the big thing in 3D printing going forward is just quality of life and ease of use. Like, let's be honest, I can take my, my Voron 1.0 down there, slap clipper on it, it'll move as fast as this. Literally, it will. Because what's the difference between a NEMA 17 motor in this machine and a NEMA 17 motor in that machine? And a Gates belt in that machine and a Gates belt in that machine. And a F695 bearing in that machine and an F695 bearing in that machine. And Core XY in that machine and Core XY in that machine. The hardware in 3D printing hasn't changed in a long time. We just have better software now to take advantage of it. So yeah, my 2016 era Voron 1.0 can move as fast as a bamboo. Now, obviously a Chimera with a single 4020, you're not gonna get the same print quality, let's be honest. But yeah, movement wise, no, no change, it's the same. Next thing would probably be those UV gel FDM printers. I don't think people will be playing those in, with those in their home. Like, let's be honest, most people involved in 3D printing are cheap. Like, people want the cheap printer. People always want the cheap printer. That's why, and Creality's still around. We're running 60, 60, 60. No, normally, infill, max out your hot end. Whatever your flow rate of your hot end is, that's what your infill should be. You should be capping out your, your flow rate with infill. Because nobody sees infill. Nobody sees infill. You you want that thing just pushing plastic for infill and just scooting along. So FDM never becomes the appliance 3D printer tech. Tim Tennis, here's the problem. Okay, and I, I love when people are like, oh, everyone's gonna have a 3D printer. Okay, here's the problem, okay? Let me, let me create a poll here. Could you right now create a CAD model of the switch on your stove. Ask your community. There you go. Okay. Could you, like, let's be honest. Could you right now open up a CAD program and create a one-to-one -one scale recreation of the switch on your stove? Okay. Because that's the problem is 
yes, everyone could buy a 3D printer, but most people can't CAD. So yeah, you can go on a database like Printables or Thingiverse or Thangs or anything else, but unless somebody's already created the model of that stove switch or that whatever random object you need right now, you, you, you can't. And obviously we're gonna get skewed results here because I'm asking a bunch of people who are involved in 3D printing. But if you were to go up to like one random person on the street, it's like, hey, can you create a 3D model of a hook so that I can hang my hat by the door? Most people can't. Let's be honest, most people can't CAD. The vast majority of people can't CAD. And those that can are like, eh, Windows 3D Builder, Tinkercad, very basic level. You're, you're not gonna CAD up, oh no, I, I need a, a, a fulcrum with a, a lever and like an actual object, an actual model of something. Most people can't. So 3D printing at home, unless everyone has a CAD class in school and knows how to do basic CAD work, they're, they're not gonna have a 3D printer unless they're gonna print knickknacks and stuff they can find online. So, yeah, I'm asking the wrong audience for that question. That's the problem. What about 3D scanning? Well, the problem with 3D scanning, I have a 3D scanner. Revo Point sent me a 3D, 3D scanner like a year ago, and I scanned a few things. The problem is, okay, now what? Uh, they're not solid objects. So I have to, you know, learn a whole CAD program like Blender or something to convert it into a mesh so I can print it and then clean it up and whatnot. So unless you already know, a scanner without the ability to model and do CAD work is kind of useless. And even then you scan it, it's not gonna be 100% one-to-one. And if there's any movement or whatever, you still have to model all that. So you can make like a single like blank model, but unless it's like a single object that doesn't need to move, it doesn't really change much. So yeah, already created Mario themed Oh yeah, well, I'm asking the wrong audience here. I'm sure most people here have had some basic, you know, intro to CAD at some point. You know, we're in a 3D printing channel for, but yeah. But that's the thing, you'll, you'll never see, because here's the thing, everyone has a stove at home because pretty much everyone can cook. Everyone has a computer at home because pretty much everyone knows how to use a computer. Most people, you know, not everyone knows how to CAD. So a 3D printer, you're limited to what others have designed. 3D scanners are a really great tool, same way a good pair of calipers are. So the thing is, I, I've played with the cheap 3D scanners and then I've also seen 3D Musketeer with his, you know, many, many, many monies scanner. And there's a marked difference between the two in terms of quality. Fixing a scan model. That's pretty much what happened with me. I, I did like their demo scans and whatnot. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna play around with that. And then I like scanned my face and then I tried to like fix my face so that I could print it. And I like went down a YouTube rabbit hole for an afternoon. I'm like, I don't have time for this right now. And I put it on the bench and it's been there for a while. David, $10, cheers. Hey all, glad to finally catch a stream again. Cheers. Joel has gone live. Hi, Joel. Well, we're gonna let this finish and then I'll, uh, I don't think I can raid Joel. Let me, let me see if I can raid Joel. Let me see if I can find Joel's stream. Um, Cause if I can raid Joel, I'll kick you all to Joel once this stream's over. Um, subscriptions, there's Joel. Okay, let's see, can, can I kick you to Joel? Copy, edit, cause you can raid in YouTube, but it's not. Positron kit when? Um, I did a video on the Positron cause LDO is working on a kit at Earth. You'll see it oh, maybe tomorrow or Saturday or Sunday. Because I'm hoping to have the three videos for Earth Booth tables out this week. So. Okay, how do I raid Joel? I want to raid Joel. Edit. Details. Okay. Oh, yeah, I gotta. Forgot to set it yet. No, this is a promoted stream. Uh, pay promotion, tag, automatic, content. Customization, redirect, add. Okay. Search videos from other channels. Oh, okay. Sweet. So if this works, if, if this works, when I end my stream here, you should be kicked to Joel's stream. If this works, okay. 
um, if this works. I don't know if it'll work. Um, I'm, I'm, Joel, Joel is, is, is already hard at work. Um, but if this works, I should be kicking you guys to Joel's stream when I end my stream. So basically we're gonna let the dog finish printing and then I'll do the giveaways and I'll kick you to Joel. It looks like it should be working. Oh no, I'm not, I'm not kicking you out. We still got a while on the dog. We're, we're, we're at like 57% on the dog. Let's speed it up. So the head of the dog will be faster. Um, tune, speed. Let's go to 150. Let's go to 150. So the thing is, you know, we always try to speed these up, but the problem is you're, you're gonna be limited by, ooh, that actually moves pretty quick for when you speed it up. Usually you're limited by the firmware acceleration limits. So you can speed it up, but you're already capped out like a thousand millimeters a second. So it can't go any faster because you're already capping it out. So. So watching all three, there you go. Having tr problems printing hinges for my Trident door. Um, I'm assuming it's the same as these hinges. You may need to pl play around with your outer wall flow rate. That might help. Yeah, the Excels actually seem like, this is a little loud. I will say this is a little louder than some of the other um, i3 style printers I've played with, but it's also seems to be moving a bit faster. So. So let's see here. How many people we got? Oh my God, we have 450 people here. Everyone say hi. If you're new here, introduce yourself, say hi. I like to get everyone to like, you know, introduce themselves, say hi to each other. Model has Z-Hop. Yep, it has Z-Hop too. Uh, the part cooling starts hot and then moves away. Actually, that could be a good idea because you know those first layers you don't want to warp, so you you maybe a little bit less cooling on those first layer. I see everyone say hi now. See, that's how you get good engagement numbers on YouTube. And by the way, um, yeah, I, I am watching Joel's stream. <laughs> I'm working. Yeah, that's actually I will say for, for you know for. Uh, for a good old bed flinger, this is actually moving around a decent clip. Uh, why do you think specifically i3 style machines got such popular and none of the other? Because it's a very simple motion system. Three motors, X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z, well, you know what I mean. Um, it's a simple motion system. It's a very simple motion system. Um, it's very cheap to build. You, you don't need a cube. You don't need a cube frame. So you need, you need something to move the bed this way, you need something to bring the gantry up and down, and you need something to move the gantry across. That's about it. So, yeah. It's easy to maintain. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's the simplest motion system. Maybe Delta is technically a little bit simpler because you, know, you have three equal towers, but then you got the kinematics that, oh my God, there's a reason they don't make the modern price Delta anymore. Oh my God, listen to that. Of course, it doesn't help that, you know, the bottom of the frame ain't screwed together and it's missing a cross beam. We're gonna have to fix that. But yeah, um, maybe Deltas are the simplest kinematic. But yeah, oh my God, that's gonna be fun to fix. Did I try TPU on the Solval? Um, Marzma. Um, this printer has been assembled in printing for two hours and four minutes from the time I cut the box or the time I forgot to start the stream, then I did start the stream. So this is literally the only print we've tried on it so far. Now, I will say it's a direct feed extruder with dual gears and it's the bigger Bontech gear. So on paper, it should print TPU just fine. It should print just fine. There's already some reviews up. Yeah, I think they, they wanted I think Friday or the Saturday was the like official like opening of when they wanted people to put out content for this. Um, me, I'm a live streamer, so I didn't do a video on this, but I know other people probably unboxed it and did full reviews of it already. It has planetary gears like, yeah, it's got planetary gears. 
Boom! I'm rather new here, but I love the fact I can watch the live stream. Awesome! I stream three days a week. So Monday, or correction, normally it's Tuesdays and Fridays, but because of Earth and me being, you know, actually I got home around this time yesterday, so I wasn't gonna stream yesterday, but normally it's Tuesdays and Fridays, either 11 a.m. or 2 p.m. start time. Uh, it goes in two week increments, so two weeks of 2 p.m., two weeks of 11 a.m. Eastern time zone, um, and the stream's usually about three hours, and then Saturdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. Screws, screws, how does this compare to a Prusa? Um, so a Prusa, how, well, where is my, my Prusa's in the other room. Um, Prusa has a metal, uh, this part is plastic, this part is plastic. Prusa's got a metal frame. Uh, the print volume on a Prusa is a little bigger on the XY, but not as big on the Z. This is 220 by 220 by 250. I think Prusa's, two, was it 210 by 250 by 230 or 210 or something like that? Um, Extruder, this is a geared direct feed extruder. Uh, Prusa is a direct feed, direct drive extruder. So there's no gearing with the extruder. Um, it is dual gear too. Um, what else? 32-bit um, versus 8-bit. Um, I don't know which flavor of Marlin they are running though. It says 1.8, but I don't know if that's their internal name for it or if it's running Marlin 1.8. It's moving at a decent clip, so I don't think that's an issue there. Um, it does got an inductive bed probe. Um, it's dual, got dual Z. Basically, this is like an injection molded, cost optimized Prusa Mark III, basically. So, yeah, 3D printing nerd. Yeah, so the plan is when I end my stream here, whenever this doggo finishes and we do the giveaway, um, you'll all be kicked to Joel's stream, I think, if I set it up right. I was actually gonna do Modbot stream, um, but uh, I can't because I think Modbot on his streaming channel doesn't follow me. YouTube has a weird thing when it comes to um, rating, which is, you know, kicking all my viewers from one stream to another when I finish. Um, on YouTube, you have to both be following each other and both allow um, whatever they call it, re redirects like, or redirecting. So I was actually going to do Modbot because, you know, smaller channel, go help the, the smaller channel. When, well, actually, he's got a bigger channel, but a smaller streaming channel. Um, so I was gonna kick you all there, but I can't. So I'm kicking you to Joel when the stream's over. So, but we gotta wait for this pooch to finish. And actually, so we sped up to 250, or correction, 150%, right about here where the mouth is. And you could see a little bit more, it looks a little bit more like the facets are a little bit more pronounced, but uh, otherwise there really isn't much of a quality hit and I will say the overhang for his, his schnoz there looks pretty good. So yeah, any progress on shelves for the new studio? Uh, well, this this is the studio, uh, not a new studio, an upgraded studio. Um, uh, it got a little sidetracked because of Earth and my brother got married at the end of September and I had to go away for that. And then I came back and then I had to go for Earth and then I came back. So hopefully in the next like little while I'll be dealing with that. So hopefully. Just pointing out the difference. Yeah, there's no fanboying here. Unless you're on Prusa's payroll, you don't need to fanboy. I mean, right now I'm probably saying, you know, based on, again, Initial opinions, we don't even have one print off this machine, so I have no idea about the long-term quality or the support base or anything like that with this printer. Um, for a lot of people, this is probably a much better value than a Prusa Mark III, let's be honest. Like, you can buy th three Prusa's Mark III's for the price of this thing. Easily, maybe four, depending on where you live in the world. And that's including taxes and shipping. So the only thing that I, I, I've got, the only th two things that I can really critique on this printer so far, the magnet for the flex plate ain't the strongest. And this part cooling fan, it's a single 4010 blower. I'm sure people will Frankenstein the, the, the tumor of a 5015 with all the ducting on this at some point. So I love the direct filament. I love direct feed. Will this solve all my problem? Well, I, you say crap cooling, but the overhangs on the dog are looking pretty good. So. Having trouble printing nylon on my Revo. Consistent clog after one print. Any ideas? Um, make sure you're printing at the right temperatures. PID tune. Um, 
I haven't printed any copolyesters. Like I printed nylon, but it was CF nylon and I haven't had any issues with the CF nylon. Um, the actual parts, everything's injection molded or aluminum. Uh, it's all eight millimeter rods, LMU bearings. Um, even that bearing in there looks like you could replace it if you really had to. Motors are your standard NEMA 17s. Uh, DJ, DGJLmotor.com, 0.8 amp phase, whatever. Generic motors. That one's cool. Pancake for the extruder. Um, it is running a little warm. The extruder motor is running a little warm, um, but I can keep my finger on it, so it's not that warm. Uh, y motor is fine. X motor is fine. Um, I don't know, power supply is fine. Controller box, no heat buildup there, I can feel. Yeah. I don't know, I'm, I'm actually, yeah, it's at 150% speed right now. Uh, this is a model off the SD card. And the reason I usually start with an SD card model is because that's what the company is saying, try. So if they give you a crap model on their SD card, that's what they're using to show off their printer. Better than an Ender 3? Well, the only Ender I've played with is an Ender 3 V2. And um, based on my initial impression so far, um, with as much as I could say about the machine so far, with this being, you know, my absolute initial impression, yes, <laughs> many yes. SD on 8-bit? No, um, it's a 32-bit board. It's a 32-bit board. It, and I don't think, yeah, there's no SD slot on the, yeah, the screen doesn't have an SD slot on it. Need to switch wire convert. This would be a pain to switch wire convert because it's rods. Things look like I wiped the floor with an Ender 3 V2. Well, I had an Ender 3 V2, so if you want to go back to my live stream of, of unboxing the Ender 3 V2 to see how it compare. How was assembly? Very good. Um, basically attached the vertical gantry portion. So it comes in two pieces, really. You got the base and the 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 Z axis with the X axis attached. So you got this part and this part. And basically you put this part on this part, you put the spool holder on, you screw it all together, you connect everything, you put the screen on, call it a day. Uh, setup was very simple. So. Gonna get a VZ bot. Um, last I talked to Vez, it seemed like that was still in the works, so yeah. What will be the difference between a Voron V01 and a V02? Um, mini Stealth Burner, which has an optimized feed path. So it's the, the Mini Stealth Burner's upgrade. Um, new top hat, which is actually the original top hat. So if you saw the video from my stream at Murph with the, the where you could count the pixels because American cell phone reception in that place sucked. Um, the original top hat out of extruded, uh, using aluminum extrusion is actually the original top hat, like the original beta top hat was that. And then we went to a printed one. Um, because of extru sourcing extrusions was an issue. Um, so new top hat, new tool head, uh, a few of the parts have tweaks to them and then new skirts. So it's like an incremental upgrade. And if you like the old top hat, you can still use it. What's so special? Um, in my opinion, it comes with all everything you would want in a printer at a very, very, very reasonable price. And the BQ Hurricane, what is the BQ Hurricane? BQ Hurricane. 404, page is not found. And I'm not going to all 3DP because all I do is just play around with the uh, SEO. 
Oh, is that just basically a BQ printer with clipper on it? Mm, meh. It's a BQ printer with clipper on it. Oh, and my mouse froze. There we go. Unfreeze the mouse. Fine, I'll go to all 3DP. Ugh. Where can I get an LDO kit? If you're in the US, uh, print it solid. Um, so let's see. BQ Hurricane. A bed slinger that runs clipper. I love how people use the term bed slinger now. So it's it's your it's a V wheel bed flinger with clipper. Um, I did a stream where I did that to a Prusa Mark III, um, or Prusa Mark III, and uh, Ender 3 V2, and uh, the hardware can't keep up with it. Very easily, you can outrun the hardware on them. Still singles it. Yeah, they took their cheap printer and just slapped clipper on it. Uh, will the mini stealth burner support LGX Mini? No, you'll have to use a mod, community mod. All right, so what are we at right now? So we're at 420 viewers. Nice. You know what else is nice? If everyone were to like that smash button, that'd be very nice. Very nice. Uh, the garage cleanup's coming along. I still got to get somebody to do the electrical. That's the problem. You see the multicolor Benchy on the Discord? Which Discord? I'm in like 50 Discords. Got to be more specific. Uh, do I know anything about the enclosure? I do not. They did not tell me anything about the enclosure. Let's try to get 420 likes on the video. That would be nice. Yeah, the, the, I'm sure there'll be mods to support the uh, the um, the mini LGX. I'm I'm sure there will be. Like technically, the um, you could still like you could use the existing tool head in the the V2 0.2. So like it, it's it's like the geometry of things aren't changing too much. So you could probably still just use the what you currently have for a tool head. We have 57 new members this stream. Jeez. So um, for those that are new to being members or new to the channel, make sure you like that smash button if you're not, so you don't you know, miss out all the fun streams we do. But next week will be the community stream. So every month we do a members only stream uh, for YouTube members and Patreon supporters. It's usually just a max relax, casual, um, unscripted QA, whatever hangout stream with community members. So that'll be next stream or next week. Um, the community challenge stream though, which is usually the same, like the third Friday of the month we're gonna do on the 29th, cause it's a spooky uh, day, cause that's the closest to Halloween, cause I'm not gonna stream on the Monday. Um, and then the Tuesdays after Halloween, you don't do anything on Halloween. And it's reviewing your, uh, it's a contest where you show off your printed costumes, props, cosplays, cosplays, whatever. Anything that falls into that general category, show it off in the channel on the Discord. You can win some filament. Um, you can win some only Benchies merch like this awesome hat here. Um, etc. Benchy is in my general chat from yesterday. Oh, geez, let me check. Uh, general chat from yesterday. Oh my god. Multicolor on a Stratasys. Oh, cool. That's a completely different tier of machine. Uh, 2.4 R4. Well, we're on R2. Um, tried it. I'd say go Trident. Trident, more people should build Tridents. Trick or treating is Mando armor. I am not. I will not be tricking. What? You think I'm going to be out trick or treating in my Mandalorian armor? Do you, do you think I would do that? Of course not. My kid will be doing it. He gets more candy. Also, why do I have a spool here of rat rig green? Hmm. I'll have to figure that out. Uh, 
Does anyone know if you can use a fluid by SD card to flash an Oxbows? Just put the firmware bin in folder. Um, yeah, you can flash it over SD card. Dad tax. Exactly. I got to go through the candy to make sure it's all good, right? You never know. Got to inspect it all. Printed solid. Yeah, you could probably get a, a Trident kit at Printed Solid if they have them in stock. I mean, I'm trying to remember. I was there Monday. <laughs> No, I'm gonna so I'm gonna print him a little Mandalorian costume. I'm gonna print him um like a I'm just gonna print it out of like silver or ABS or sil or gray PLA and just uh print him a costume. That way I can use him for content. Which means I gotta finish mine, or at least get mine near the end. <laughs> My belt came in, so I got a belt finally, so I can put the uh, mag pouches on that or ammo pack pouches. Same SD card? No, because you gotta you're gonna need a different SD card. You need one SD card for the the Raspberry Pi and then one SD card for Flashing, but the thing is after you flash the octopus you can take the SD card out it Doesn't need to stay in there Print look good. It's looking very good. Remember from about the mouth of the dog up is actually at 150% speed and um, These overhangs are coming out Dang clean like I, I, I Was a little worried about this thing only having a 4010 blower for a part fan and um, it seems to be working pretty dang good. How are the Hedamames holding up? Perfectly. I, I've had no issues with them. I dropped them once from about this high because I, the, um, you know, I'm sitting in my chair and I have the wall next to me in the computer room. So I, I have a clip on the wall that I hang them on and I hung them on and then I spun around in my chair, clipped them and they fell off and they fell onto the floor. So they fell about this high onto the floor and the, um, one of the arms, like you got the arms that go over the head and you got the little clip that like ratches it in place. One of those shattered. I, I came downstairs and I printed a new part. I had it on in like 10 minutes and the, they're back in use. So the, the Minamames, I actually bring them with me when I go traveling. So I brought these to Earth. They're like my, in the hotel room headphones. Um, I find the Minamames are not as comfortable in the longer term as the Hedamames. Um, but they're still comfortable. Like I, I still, these, I travel with in, in the Hedamames, I literally daily drive. They are my go-to headphones. I said try 200%. I don't know if we could jump into 200. Oop. So let's try 200. So tune, speed, let's try 200. Can we go higher than 200? Yeah, we can go higher than 200. We'll do 200, so 200. So the thing is we might be acceleration capped. So what I gotta do is I gotta hook a, um, a Raspberry Pi up to this running Octoprint so I can dump the uh, the parameters and see what the default excels and speeds and whatnot are. Why not Baby Yoda? Because everyone does Baby Yoda and I, I don't wanna buy a Baby Yoda costume. Plus he's, he's too tall for Baby Yoda. He's like half my height. So I'm gonna do my Mando armor and then I'm gonna print him like a, uh, um, a Din Jaren, a Mandalorian Mandalorian armor. So right now it's at 200% speed. Pronto face as well. Yeah, true. Is there Bluetooth? As far as I know, no. I'm sure you could mod it, but. I love how the Solval Tech rep is in Joel's stream, but not in mine. Unless you're here too. If so, hello. So yeah, don't forget, if you wanna win one of these, Saval is giving away one. Um, link in the description, I don't know exactly when the draw is. So enter there and then also, um, we got the Polymaker filament we're giving away. So we do that, when the print's done, we're gonna do the draw. So make sure you enter. And yes, I, I, I am watching Joel stream while he does his. <laughs> Although I have it muted, so I don't know what he's saying. What rec cams would you recommend quality of price? Um, here's the thing, it doesn't really matter. Um, let me pull up some cameras here, for example. Okay, so. 
This is my V226. This is a, a C270, okay? So this is a C270 um, in the printer, okay? Okay, um, this machine is off. This is a Pi Cam in the printer, okay? So the frame rate's a little bit lower, but you could see if you're making spaghetti, okay? Um, it, if you're just looking for spaghetti, whatever the heck you can get. But if you're looking to actually like record and make good quality, see uh, Logitech C920 or equivalent. What about Quill? Here's the thing, I, I don't, I, I want something easy. So I'm just gonna get him a jumpsuit, a cheap jumpsuit, and print him some Mando parts, glue them on, and call it a day. And a helmet. Oh no, Joel's catching up to me in, in, in views. We got almost the same amount of viewers. <laughs> I'm actually surprised I have more than him. How the heck? Uh, C920 is old. So, still works just fine. I mean, the, the camera you are looking on right now, this this camera, right, let me get my hands right. So this one, nope, uh, this one go up. This one go, oop. This camera right here, okay? That's a C920. This right here is a C920. <laughs> like legit, it's a C920. <laughs> Works just fine. <laughs> so if he jumps plus 400, I'm going to be interested because I've never done a raid before or um, a redirect on YouTube. So this will be interesting to see if it works. Okay, so the trick on um, when when you got cameras, okay, I don't know if I can do it on this one. Settings, cameras, okay. Where is it? Oh no, this is this is the problem. I got like old settings to be OP. Okay. So machine. Where is no, where is it? Where's the camera settings? There's like a camera setting you gotta play with. I don't know where it's at. But basically you need to like unlimit your frame rate, essentially. There's like a, a limit frame rate option, turn it off. Oh, here we go, here we go, I think this is it. So for webcams, edit, um, target FPS, yeah, adaptive, make sure it's adaptive. Or MPEG streamer, I think. Or adaptive, I can't remember, it's one or the other. I think it's that one. Okay, that one. I know it's one of the other gives you better frame rates, like a smoother frame rate. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's. Don't use adaptive. It, it's been a while. Um, is it? I think this is actually 0.1 layer height. Um, one second here. Let me let me check. Uh, it's 47.5 on the Z. 47.9. Oh no, I just did a Z hop. 47.7. No, it's 0.2 layer height. 0.2 layer height for the dog. Yep, 0.2. Getting near the end though. What's the best webcam for Voron to put in a Trident? Whatever you can get, well, I was for the longest time, it was whatever you can get your hands on. Um, the C270, or actually, no, the right now in uh, my V226, this is the, um, that OV586 or whatever, that that like strip webcam, the, 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 the it's basically a laptop camera module on a USB um, connector. That's what this is. So I used to have a C270 in here, but now it's it's that OV whatever camera. I, I used to have one around here. I don't know where it went. I, I did a, I did it on a stream. And we're done. Yeah, so magnet. 
Magnet's weak. Magnet is weak. Um, let me check something here. Where are you? Where are you? Actually, it's in the is it in the other room? It might be in the other room. One second. Let me let me go grab something. I'll be back in a second. Because sometimes it's actually not the magnet, it's the bed. Where is my Prusa in a box? There, or eh, Ender in a box. There's the Ender in a box. There we go. Stepping over everything. Okay. So. This is a spare flex plate that I have. Yeah, it's the magnet. Uh, that one's a little, yeah. Yeah, it's the magnet. The magnet isn't that strong. Now it's, it's, it's easier to lift up than it is to shift around. But yeah, okay. So in terms of doggo, focus on the doggo. Let me get my face out of the way. Uh, the skirt again the first layer was a little low so the, the the first layer is a little smushed yeah nothing came off the bed though the little lines didn't come off the bed so there we go so again up to about here is about 100 percent and then the last like from above the eyes up was 200 percent speed and uh yeah that's actually i i would say this is actually focus there we go that that ain't bad like for a demo print off a brand new machine that ain't bad that's uh that's a good doggo um that ain't bad um what i will do is i will get a uh i'm gonna slice it just using a prusa profile um, Prusa Mark III profile. I'll get a uh, Cali Dragon sliced up uh, 200% and I'll let that print. And uh, yeah, I am OV5640. I don't know which one I have. I have one of them. I don't know the exact one I have, but I have one. Yeah, I would say I'm impressed. I, I legit am. If this machine stays like this, because that's the thing with these lower price machines is it's QC issues and longevity. That's what you kind of have to worry about. But if it, this machine seems to be fine. I, 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 Saval, you made, you built a dis, decent cheap printer. So, uh, what probe? It's an inductive probe. It's like a five mil or six mil inductive probe. Um, the same kind of probe that the, uh, Shoot, I can't remember. Is it the V Minion or the, the Ava uses? It's it's a it, it's an inductive probe right here. You can, whoop, okay, don't push that. That's a fan. Focus on my hand. Focus on my hand. Focus on my hand. Focus on the hand. Focus on the hand. Move, move movement movement. Focus on the hand. Okay, now let's bring it down. Bring it down. Bring it down. No, don't focus on the filament. Focus on the hand. There you go. It's this probe. That probe. Okay. That probe. So yeah, um, I'm impressed. I, I legit like this, think this is actually pretty decent. Um, obviously, one one print does not a review make. One print does not a review make. However, initial impressions are good. Initial impressions are very good. Um, build quality, like the part quality seemed very good. Assembly was very smooth, very clean. Um, user interface was very good. Um, let me turn this off here. Like, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, not bad.
Are you hiding in the box? Calvin, are, are you interrupting daddy's work? Calvin, what are you doing in there? Are you hiding in the box? Can you come out and say hi? Hey, look at the camera. The what? Cheese click. I'm surprised he fits in there. Okay. See, you, you don't, 3D printers, not only can you print toys for your kids, you can give them the box. Huh? What? You hiding in the box? Yeah. Aww. I'm surprised he fits in there. Okay, so let's do the giveaway. Let's do the giveaway. You want to play hide and seek? Okay, well, Daddy's got to finish working, and then he'll play hide and seek with you, okay? Okay. So let's do the wheel name. So every stream, we give away a spool of filament. Um... And this stream is no different. So if you haven't entered, um, you'll get another chance on Friday. Every Friday we do it as well. Every stream we do it. Are you hiding in the box? Yeah. Yeah. Do you promise not to get into anything while Daddy finishes up his stream? Huh, Calvin? I really gotta clean this room. I got stuff all over the floor. I once found about half of Voron's worth of parts under the bed. Okay. Because he would take printed parts from a box that he could get into in here and take them upstairs. Okay. Okie dokie. So, um, Saval V0, SV06, uh, somebody give me a number between one and six. I need a number between one and six. One and six. Ian R put six, but he said that very early. So either he got that before everyone else or he jumped the gun. Um, the next number was three. So let's do two. So one, four, five, six, and then we'll do the, the three just for good measure. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. He's just playing in the box. Okay. I did not cheat. Okay. I believe you. But the winner is Shock Games. You better be a real human. Pull you up here. Oh, you entered. Oh, you got in right in the, the last second there. Okay, shock game. So you will get an email from me um, when the stream ends um, with a little form you got to fill out. You'll get your filament in a couple days to a couple weeks, depending on where you live in the world. You get to pick one spool. There you go. So congratulations. Everyone clap, 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 clap. Okay. So that is that. Um, so I'm going to end the stream there. What time is it? It's 440. Usually we run three hours, but Joel's streaming and we got the print done. So I'm going to get another print set up on this tonight. Let it go. I'll post pictures of this guy on the Twitter and the discord. So follow me on Twitter at 3P Nero. Go join the community discord link below. Um, yeah. Um, again, Soval sent me this printer for free. Uh, words and opinions are my own, however. Um, and my word so far is I think it's actually very decent for the price. It's if as far as I know, as long as the production units are like this, I don't think you'll have an issue with this machine. Again, not a review, just initial impressions. Um, but yeah, that's a good doggo. Um, so yeah, shout out to Saval for sending me the printer. Shout out to Polymaker for the spool of filament we give away every stream. Again, Saval is giving away one of these. Enter in the description for your chance to win one. Um, for those that donated to the channel, uh, became members of the channel or gifted memberships, to others, he's still in the box. Um, I thank you, I would not be able to do the things I do, create the content I create without your continued support. You make it all possible. And again, Friday uh, will be after Earth. So we'll, we'll talk about Earth on Friday. Um, so I'm gonna end the stream there. Um, don't go away, but stay on the channel because if all goes well, you'll be booted to Joel's stream, if it goes well, once I end the stream. So everyone, bye, bye. Uh, what day is it? It's Wednesday. It's almost Friday. It's hump day. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. Enjoy the rest of your week.